We're doing things a little bit different today. Mitochondria Gallery, Accesse Alongwe, a Cameroonian and self-taught visual artist who puts a heavy focus on black enlightenment, who has also been within his art practice for eight years and participated in over 20 exhibitions worldwide. And I personally think he's up next. Myself, Mariah Elise, an art advisor, private curator, as well as the founder of Elise Art Group, and Kendra Walker, an art advisor and writer based out of Atlanta, Georgia, who has contributed to publications such as Artsy, Art Newspaper, Sugarcane Magazine, and Culture Magazine. She has a practice that prioritizes Black artists and critically analyzes their work. They asked us to sit with Sese's collectors to discuss his latest body of work, Don. Don is a manifestation of Sese's recent migration to Texas from his previous life in Cameroon. For all inquiries on Sese's work, please email me at MariahElise at EliseArtGroup.com. Let's get to it. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started. Sese, maybe you can tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of how you got started painting. So uh, like I said, I'm Sese Langwe, and I pretty much started drawing and painting from, from, from way back from small. There was this program sponsored by a brewery company back home called Brasserie de Cameroon. And they had this program where kids would come every day and, and every Saturdays and do like uh, drawings and all that. And then at the end of that, they'll, they'll give them like drinks, beverages and all that. So I wanted to win like all the time, so I get that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where I started. And as I grew up, I realized that it was, it was like part of me. Mm-hmm. And I continue doing it to, to where we are right now. How do you see your Cameroonian roots pull through in your artwork? Yeah, I, I'm a Cameroonian and every brush stroke is Cameroonian in my yeah. artwork. And I, I remember this day I was discussing with my dad and he told me when, when, when <coughs> the colonialists came to Africa, like in Cameroon, uh, most of our cultural, like cultural artifacts and all that were burned due to the fact that they're thinking we're doing black magic and all that mm. so when you come to my village right now we, we barely have those kind of things you see so i'm not just painting for me i'm painting for a whole culture like a culture of my people and all that so it's this emotion that i gather all through to where I'm, I'm at right now i paint with them like i paint with the spirits and all that i paint with them mm, yeah. i love that your ancestors yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. That's beautiful. So maybe let's talk a little bit about this latest body of work. What kind of inspired it? Looking back at your previous pieces, you know, you're kind of focusing on just the face. And now we're here where we're seeing the body and you're giving us more environment behind to add to the narrative. Maybe you can kind of tell us where Dawn was inspired from and why have you decided to... Um, incorporate the full body. Okay, so generally in my in my work, I try to like um, experiment a lot, like to tell my looking for different ways to tell my story. So generally, Don is actually like um, creating a conversation between the two worlds I've lived in, like Africa, Cameroon, and in the United States. Me coming here, the way of life here, the system, and and everything that I've seen. So it's me creating this conversation between those two worlds in terms of how we live as black people in those two worlds and me just documenting everything that I've seen so far. So that's the general idea behind Don. And also it's a new beginning for me, my life in, 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 in America right now. So all that, all that emotion, that all is all about all that emotion I've been through and it's a new beginning. Don signifies a new beginning for the future mm-hmm. for me. Yeah. And you live in San Antonio. Yeah. And, and I'm from Texas. I'm from Beaumont, Texas, a very small place. Um, how has San Antonio, I hear United States, like how the states have <coughs> affected your journey um, in how you approach your work, but yeah. how has San Antonio affected how you approach your work? Generally, the notion we as most, most Africans have is that America is like heaven. But when, when you come here, you realize that there's a lot of things that that you just have to work hard for to get. So generally, me coming from San Antonio, especially where my studio is at, it reminds me a lot of back home. Because mm. I didn't know I was going to see those kind of buildings, like the old trucks parked and the old cars, sport cars, like really old infrastructure. I didn't know I was going to see that yet. I just knew I was going to come and see skyscrapers and all that. So at the end of the day, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't like... 
it depends on where you find yourself. It's just you as an individual trying to do the best for yourself. I don't know if we're going to see San, uh, San Antonio having skyscrapers. <laughs> 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 if, we, if anyone's from Texas, San Antonio is not, it's not going to be the place for skyscrapers. Yeah. <laughs> you get a lot more culture there, for sure. So if you tell people back home that this is what I'm seeing here, it's like, yeah. Yeah, they won't believe you, no? Yeah. 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 But in America, what are you saying, Sissy? Yeah. <laughs> So a lot of times, if, if anyone is a real patron of the arts, we always look for identifiers. Yeah. Um, what makes this person stand out? How do I automatically identify this person as an artist, right? Yeah. So for you, I think we can all, looking around the room, we all know that it's the enlarged eye. Yeah. And I just wanted to know, should we, do you want your audience to make room for you to grow and have other identifiers? Or will we consistently see more of this? Yeah, definitely. Like you said, every artist is looking for like an identifier, and I believe I already I'm already getting there. Yeah, for sure. So it's just me like continuing where I'm, where 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 I, where I am right now, and trying to like throw more lights, trying to touch on different topics. But definitely, you're going to see the enlightenment eye. Yeah, I don't think you've actually um, explained to us like what is the meaning behind the big eye for maybe people that aren't familiar with your work. So generally, to me, it's like um, an eye of enlightenment. Like every black person or every person needs to have that eye. Like some sort of consciousness to always strive for, for, for the betterment of oneself. So it's an eye of open, it, it serves as a reminder to you, like, hey, I need to open my eyes. I need to get things doing. I need to do things. I need to, like, do this. I need to read. I need to, like, so it's just, it's just that. That's the general idea behind the, the, the eye. It's just like consciousness, awareness. Consciousness, yes. Like your third eye. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Nice, nice, nice. So uh, we can, I guess, tap in a little bit into where do you see your work evolving to? And do you see your work ever going into other mediums? Yeah, of course. I, I love installations. I love installations, so I'll definitely get into that. That's much. exciting. That is exciting. Yeah. I want to hear more about that. Yeah, I love I love inf in, in installation so much. So definitely something I would like to try in future, like to get into it, like to do things that could enlighten people more. Yeah. Because I believe it's going to. It always starts with an individual. If you if you work on yourself and then you're enlightened on some certain things, it's going to like be great for your society as well. Can you explain a little bit more for first of all? This is recorded for YouTube, <laughs> if y'all didn't know. And for anyone in here if, that doesn't know what an installation is, can you talk about that a little bit more? To me, I just feel like installation is more like um, expression of, of, of an artist in, 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 a, in a different kind of medium, like just basically expression, and not just paint and brush, but it goes to another dimension where you use other things to create and to represent your idea. Yeah, getting off of the wall yeah. into the space. Into the space, yeah. yeah. I love that. Yeah. So are you thinking about museums one day? Yeah. Sure. Yeah? Okay, Ooh, good to know. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um you you kinda just talked about the eye, right? But we we spoke a little bit earlier on the phone and I'm a Jay Z fan. Yeah. Like I love Jay Z. I love Beyonce a lot more. But <laughs> I love Jay-Z. So when I first seen The Eye, the first thing I thought about, and we both kind of agreed on this, was um, he has, I, I, you remember the name of the song? Oh, uh, I can't really remember, but. Uh, I, can I, I Live? Yeah, but Can I, I Live, I, yeah. I, I know the line very well. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Jay-Z says, uh, so I keep, my, I keep one eye open like CBS. CBS. And that's the first thing that I thought about when I seen your work, right? So can you, we kind of talked about it a little bit, but can you talk about how that line, um, or even how Jay-Z even could have any type of um, inspiration towards where you're going with your work? Okay, so generally, to be honest, I'm a big fan of Jay-Z, but everything about my work didn't come from that, that, that line. It didn't come right. from that inspiration. So. For sure. But generally, like I said, I've been working on, like, I like, I paint a lot. You know, so I like experimenting on things, and that's why I, I'm here right now. Because mm -hmm. due to the development and all that, that's why I'm here right now. And and what he said in that line is like it goes ahead to explain the general idea of of what I'm 
what, what I'm talking about. He's a successful man, and he has his eye open on the bigger things. Mm-hmm. So that's the general thing I'm talking about. And he, by him getting there, he helps a lot of other people around him, mm-hmm. not just monetarily, but inspires a lot of people around him. So it always starts with you as an individual. So you develop yourself, get your eyes focused on what you want to achieve, and then try to get what you need, enlighten yourself, and get that background route so that you can get to where you're going to. I love that. It's your driving force for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a good time to kind of digest uh, specific artworks. I think hearing a narrative is really important to kind of understand where an artist is coming from and, you know, what they're thinking when they're creating this work. So maybe we can talk about the the house back home. Let's talk about that one into some detail. Okay, a house back home is actually that piece, the first piece. The first piece on the wall. So actually, like I was saying, it actually goes in line with the story I've been saying since we started this, this conversation. So I realized that back home, you know, when coming here, I realized a lot of things that reminded me of back home, especially where my studio is at, like I said, from, from, from where we started. So me, it's just me like infusing this into my work, like the different houses, the old infrastructure and the rest. And, and I go in further to like explain that it doesn't really matter where you find yourself as a person. It's just you building yourself individually, then you get there. Mm-hmm. So this contrast in the walls and everything, and then what I've seen, like, it's, there are things that I see, like, it's, it's like I'm in Africa, but the idea of people back home, they don't get that. They just know that, okay, when you get into America, you, you're, you, you, you're already rich. You're a rich person, or you're, you already have money and all that. <laughs> so it's me placing myself in, on, in that subject, like... Yeah, yeah, I've seen it, and it looks a lot like back home. There's no difference. So if I stay lazy, I'm not going to have anything. Mm-hmm. So I keep my eye open, and then I try to like focus on what I need to achieve, no matter where I find myself. So that's it. Yeah, how does it make you feel, um, you know, creating these paintings with these very personal narratives and having them live in different homes? Yeah, it's it's really it's really it's really exciting to see that people because the highest form you can encourage an artist to buy their work, like mm. to me seriously. So if it goes to that extent where people really appreciate what you do, it's really encouraging, and I really feel happy about that. Yeah. And it goes ahead for to explain that I'm sharing the message, and people are accepting it and and, and living with it. So mm-hmm. that's how I feel. I love that question, Kendra, because when you collect work. You live with it every day. Yeah. And when someone collects your work, they're going to interact with it every day. every day. When they invite people over, they're going to talk about it. It's, 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 it, is the, and it is the highest form of respect for an artist to collect their work and live with it. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah, um, just like something I noticed with this body of work is you're using a lot of cool colors. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like if not, like there is blue in every single image. Mm-hmm. Is there a reason for that? Or is that your favorite color? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, blue is my favorite color, but that's not, it, 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 I didn't really realize that. It's just something that came like naturally when I was mm. painting. But like I said, it's done. So the skies are blue and it's done. So it's a new beginning for me. Yeah. yeah. I would, I, I'm going to uh, get away from this a little bit because I would love to hear more about um, the piece here. Bleach. Black, without bleach, black without bleach. Yeah, I was looking at that piece, and it's in to Kendra's point. The blue stands out to me the most in this piece, and okay. I wanted to understand that the title um, because it's driving the piece, right? So I would like to understand the title a little bit more. So it's me just appreciating blackness. Well, I've been through a lot as a people, like from the first century to now. I've been through a lot as a people. Mm-hmm. So it's me just appreciating the fact that we are black and you should accept that black without no mixture, black without bleach or anything. Mm-hmm. You are you and you should accept that and then look for ways to better your life as a person. Right. So that's a general idea. So is, there's him standing in front and then there's like a field of, of grass or anything like, like a farm and then there's a warehouse in the back. Mm-hmm. So for you to get you want to, to where you want to get to, you need to walk that farm. So you process it in that warehouse, and then people will buy from you. So that's the general idea behind the piece. You need to develop yourself, and then put your work out there, and then so people could relate to it, and then 
they, they, they help you to get to where you want to go to. Yeah, I think we should take some time to really appreciate the, the texture that he's able to create and all of the fabrics that these individuals are wearing. Right. Just the shine off of that blue jacket is gorgeous. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, and I think it's really also interesting thinking that you're you're adding uh, this bleach in here because when you think of like you know skin bleaching, this is traditionally yeah. like something that happens like with women, like with beauty products. So you adding this product and then having a man here is it really just makes you think that mm -hmm. this isn't just for the females, yeah. even though that's what they promote, you know? Yeah, and bleaching your skin is typically to get lighter and lighter. Mm -hmm. Black without bleach, I, that's a, such a contrast in title. Yeah. I love that. I think it's easy to say, um, your work says it has a lot to do with determination and really taking where you are, no matter where you are in life, and staying focused to get to where you've been. It's been a constant narrative that we've all heard you talk about, um, you know, throughout this conversation. Yeah. Um, so something else that we noticed, we're, we're talking about colors already, but something that I noticed more so, more specifically with the pieces over here that you use a lot of color blocking. And um, for anyone that doesn't necessarily understand what color blocking is, it's when you take one pure color and then you take another pure color that may have some type of contrast to one another and you put them together. And so there's not much detail like there is with the rest of the work, it's it's just one pure color. Yeah. Where's that inspiration from? Okay, like like you said, color blocking, like putting together two colors from different colors from the color wheel to form like complement them to form beauty. Yeah. So generally, that's that's the idea of which I've been pl I've been painting on since. Like we're on equal platform with whether you're black, white, whether you're yellow, whether you're green or blue. We're on equal platform in life right now, and it's for you as an individual to develop yourself, to strive in future. Mm -hmm. So it's me combining like different colors, yellow, white, to form beauty, like blocking them to form this this sense of beauty that mm -hmm. appeals to you. Mm -hmm. That's what could really happen when you when when we unite, like whether black, white, mm -hmm. Asian, Mexican, or anything, we could form beauty. You mm -hmm. know. So it's me preaching that as well in my work. Right, I love that. Yeah, I love that you have a variety of different techniques in yeah. this series. So the pieces with all the detail in it and then the ones that are more just solid colors. Right. Um, you know, now that we're kind of still talking about work, maybe we can talk a little bit about Suzanne's World. Okay, Suzanne's World is a piece with the, with the lady in flower. So generally, like, like I've been saying here, <coughs> this body of work is kind of like, I work on them simultaneously, so they tell each story, but they're they are similar in the message they want to pass. So Susan's world is me, like, empowering the, the women out there, you know. You, you're on your own, you have your, at the end of the day, you, you're on your own, you have your world, you have your home on your own. That is within you, like yourself within you, like your personal self. So if you want to if you want to stay that way, then it's fine by you. But if you want to achieve something in life, then you need to go out there and enlighten yourself, work hard, so you have your flower. Mm -hmm. So that's um, the general idea behind the piece. Wow, it's like almost like you're giving yourself the flowers yeah. for the hard work you've done. For the hard work you've done. Oh, I, I love, love that. that. Yeah, I know. Right? I'm, that's inspiring. Right. I'm sending myself flowers next week. <laughs> 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 I love that. Um, in talking about more pieces, we discovered that we knew the same people from a specific image, right? Yeah. And I thought that was I thought that was super cool. If you guys don't know, we're, we're talking about Twenty Miles, and which is my favorite piece in in the exhibition. And so um, my boyfriend's brother took that picture, <laughs> and we just discovered it, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> that's crazy. Just discovered it. it's crazy. Yeah. So. Um, you've been exploring what it is to be a black cowboy. Yeah. And I'm from Texas. You've been living in Texas. Yeah. You guys have been living in Texas. Um, if you're anywhere on the north side in Houston, you know there are black cowboys. But it's, not, it's very rare that we hear the story um, on television of the black cowboy. So I would really want to hear, I really want to hear your perspective from um, why do you think it's important to tell the story of the black cowboy? So, <clears throat> me, to me as a person, I just believe that a lot of our stories 
haven't been told in the right way. Like we as black people, a lot of our stories haven't been told in the right way. So from the first century, we have been through a lot to now where we are. That's why I titled the painting 20 miles, like the 20th century or the 21st century. It's time for us to stand back by our cars, by ourselves, that's what I mean, and look through the future and say, hey, this has happened, yes. But it's time for us to change the narrative going through this 21st century and onwards. So 20 miles for a car, is the car is still good. Mm -hmm. It's still good, it isn't bad. So we got a lot of miles to ride through. And in those miles that we're riding through, we could meet obstacles, yes, true, but we need to stay focused mm -hmm. and tell our own stories and make people know that we had, we had done these things. Mm -hmm. People should know that we have been there. Mm -hmm. People should know that we are equal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's the general idea behind, mm. behind the piece. I love that. Um, this wasn't in the notes, but I really want you to talk about this piece. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've deferred from the notes about 12 times. <laughs> <laughs> so, so generally, <laughs> so generally me, uh, is it, like I said, uh, on the onset, it's a contrast between the world I've lived in and, and where I am right now. Normally in Africa, we have open door markets. Like we have normal markets where you come and see tomato, like spills, uh, all those things, beverages and all that. So it was a new experience for me coming to America and then walking into Walmart and then see everybody busy. And then just to get basic food stuff that we get from our local market back home, get, we get to get it from like a, a, a big mall or supermarket. So it was a big experience for me. And normally in Cameroon, she would, hold, she would probably hold a Saksamoto, not a designer's bag. <laughs> so not a, not a designer's bag to walk into Walmart. So that, that difference is eye-opening to me as a person. And I believe that if people back home could know this, they could like, we could do Walmart in Cameroon. Mm. So that's the certain level of development here. Yeah, we could do that back home if we, if we really want to do it and if we change our mentality on a lot of certain things. Right. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Yeah, so just to put things in focus, I feel like we've, we've talked about it, but can you say, can you tell everyone what you would say uh, your main focus in your practice is? Self-development. Self-development. Yeah. Wow. Want to elaborate a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> it says everything for itself. Self-development. Yeah. Just try to be the best of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Do you kind of see the the message in your work like changing over time? Because even like again, bringing up the work you were making in the beginning was self development the main focus in that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe expressing different ideas, but not really like changes in my work, but mm -hmm. expressing like different ideas in my work. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um. So last question. <laughs> um, how are we doing on time? I don't know. I don't know how. How are we doing on time? Okay. We're good? Okay. okay. So one thing that I noticed when I was looking through the PDF of your work is just how beautiful the titles of your paintings were. You know, sometimes you look at artwork or you look at exhibitions and the titles are just like very vague or very direct. And the way you've kind of created the title to really carry the narrative of the image as well, I thought, I thought was very beautiful. So maybe you could talk to us a little bit about where you were getting the inspiration for your titles. Is this something you maybe, did you think of the title first or after you created the image? So, so before I start creating, I have an idea. And it's around the idea that I'm able to like create a title. And basically to me, the title is like you having a key in your hand and then opening the door to get into something. So that's, that's, how, that's how the title, that's the way the title means to me. So I try to make it in such a way that it, it, it draws you to the walk, and then you get into the walk, and then you, explore, you experience something. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if someone were to see your work and they had no idea about you or your practice, like what would you want them to get from it? Mm -hmm. Like someone that maybe not even, doesn't collect art, is just viewing, viewing your work for the first time. <coughs> uh, a lot of people have told me that and it's basically it like 
the eye draws a lot of people. Like people are going to live here and say that artist who draws people with big eyes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's the general thing. And I, and I believe that that tells my story. Because why does it draw people with big eyes? Yeah. You start thinking, like, start thinking about a lot of things. So you start thinking, why does he have a big eye? <laughs> what am I trying to tell you? So I create this platform for conversations. And that's key to me. I don't like... If I draw them with normal eyes, yes, cool, it's cool, a beautiful lady, you will really have room to think. Yeah. So I'm giving you a room to think about a lot of things. Yeah, I think when I first look at your work, um, I think I, I'm attracted more to like the hair, like the hair mm. color. And mm. then for me, then it's the eye. Mm. What about you? Well, I mean, it was the eye. <laughs> 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 and I had the exact thought process that he would expect someone to have. Yeah. Right. Um, it, I looked at it and I said, wow, I wonder why he draws or he paints with this enlarged eye. And, and like I, I said a little earlier, the first thing I thought about was, you know, that. The Jay-Z. Yeah. And, and so I, I think we were in alignment. We were in an alignment with, um, with what your practice is because we probably listen to the same music. <laughs> that may be why. But what's next for you, Sese? <sighs> <laughs> Tell us all. Let us know. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, there's actually a lot coming up, uh, and I just keep my fingers crossed because I'm excited so far about everything that's happening around me. AKA, I, he's not telling us. <laughs> uh, I'm excited for the installation work. That's what I want to see. Me too. Yeah. I would love to see that. Right. Um, I think that's all we have for you guys today but we do want to open up the floor for q a if you guys have a question feel free to just pop your hand up and we can don't be shy go ahead um so my question is where do you get your inspiration from you know like any regular creative uses inspiration so why do you stay elevated and to sort of make you so like i was telling you i don't just paint for myself i paint for a whole culture like where I'm from right now, I'm trying to like have this space of creativity for my village and all that. So I paint with all that green. And music wise, I get my inspiration from a whole lot of other artists, like musicians, Fela Kuti, and yeah. So that, and I read too. So that keeps me like updated somehow. I'm enlightened as well. <laughs> I love that that reading is keeping you inspired. Yeah, That's me great. too. Yeah. What are you reading right now? Yeah. Um, the origin of African civilization. Check mm. and third you. Mm. Nice. S send send me that. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you go ahead? Yes. Um, when you're painting, do you is it just quiet? Are you blasting music? How does how does that <laughs> The music, <laughs> loud music. <laughs> Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I'll sum it up, man. Thank you. Um, the whole project, how long have you been working on it? And I'm wondering how long will each work take? So, three months. Okay. Three months for one? Like, it was something that was thought through since, but three months of work, consistent work. And really, with the paintings, I, I can't really tell because I work like every day. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any other questions? None. One more. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to ask about, I know that we talked about Walmart, but you also have major brands, and so it makes me think about capitalism, and so there's Walmart, McDonald's, and then the gas station, Mobile, right? Um, and so I wanted to get your commentary perhaps on American brands, uh, but also capitalism. That's, a, good That's a great question. Yeah. I didn't, can you can you come again, please? Yeah. So, um, you're thinking like big American brands like Walmart and McDonald's and Mobile in terms of gas. And so, um, as you're thinking black people, I wanted to know your thoughts on just like capitalism and money and how it impacts black people in the black and the world. Okay. Yeah. That's something we as Africans we are facing right now because they'll say we are third world countries and everything kind of like works yeah better than us back home so it's kind of it, it like it's like an embodiment of that i'm trying to preach you know 
the differences in, 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 in systems and all that. So I'm trying to preach that so that people open an eye on these things and, and know how to balance up their own, their own systems. Mm. Yeah. Any other questions? So I guess we're gonna wrap things up. Thank you guys so much for listening and asking <laughs> questions. <Sorry. laughs> Thank you, Cesse, for you, Cesse. engaging in conversation. <laughs> before we um, before we head out, I did bring a couple of copies of Sugarcane Magazine. Sugarcane Magazine is a black art and culture magazine based out of Miami, Florida. Um, it's super important to support black publications because absolutely um, press plays such a huge part <laughs> in the development of a career, sorry, of an artist's career. So uh, we have some copies for you guys. They're free, follow them on Instagram. Um, and yeah, thanks for listening. Thank you guys for being here today. Cesse, thank you. Thank you. Kendra, thank you. I'm gonna do one more okay, thing to-